Friday and welcome to Wine and Cheese for another week. Marcus, well, what have you got for us this week? Well, you know, Phil, it's been an interesting week. Yes. Heard you've had a bit of trouble with your budgie. Don't start <laughs> about my budgie. We'll be going well, he was on up, forever. He was up to no good, wasn't he? I mean, let's face it. Was he breaking in or breaking out? He was throwing his ladder around the cage because I leave the ABC radio on for him and I think he's just had enough of all the bad news. <laughs> <laughs> and I came home and his ladder was like totally on the other side of his cage. He's a bit demonstrative, isn't he? I mean, you know, he could, he might have been out for the day. It might be evident. Maybe he was out. He'd he doesn't out. come out. He doesn't like to come out. I have to make him come out to have a fly. I keep explaining to him, you're a bird. You need to fly. Okay. It's part <laughs> you of your flapping exercise, your wings and right? And I'd sort of help him, <clears throat> you know. And, um, and I get him out and I let him have a fly every day because I, I don't like the idea of putting a bird in a cage sort of thing. But he's cool. And he flies back to her and puts himself in there and puts himself to bed and all that. But he must Has have Has he got a, a doona? No, no. Oh, but, well, that's what he's upset about, mate. He's been oh, looking for your doona. Got the ladder out. Obvious. Maybe. Maybe. You need to have words with him. Or would you he like me to have He was pissed off about something, though, because he's oh. never, ever done that before. No, no, no. Have a, have a crack at me. Oh, mate, thank you. Safe distancing. Oh, no. Yeah. I'm a thoughtful person. We got the same you know, to double check. Yeah, thank you. You. you know I'm a thoughtful person. Um, okay, so uh, was it last week or the week before? I can't remember. We had a bit of a competition. Week one. Week one. Uh, um, Bob DeWolf received his cheesels. Mm. Very happy, I believe. Mm -hmm. Did he try to plant them? We gave him the chisel seeds as well, didn't we? So he can... Build. His wife was doing a um, vegetable garden. Ah. Oh. And so they planted them. So hopefully they'll get some nice chisel bushes come out of it. Nice, nice. Very good. Mm. So we thought um, we'll do uh, maybe another competition, Phil. Mm -hmm. uh, don't know what the prize will be yet. Um, we'll but we'll think, of, we'll think of something. We've got plenty of DVDs here we can throw in. <coughs> yeah, so... Um, Your Dean Martin ones over there. <laughs> I'm sure somebody would love that. I don't, I don't know if we'd throw them in or just throw them out. <laughs> so, this week's competition, it's Guess the Item. Right. Guess the Item. So From what, the description bought, on the packaging. You bought something. We bought something. And... Um, <laughs> this is the description. This is the description, okay. the translation. Yeah. So All right, go for the it. product uses advanced microcomputer manufacturing technology, automatic body sensing, high performance, energy saving, ease of use, Ooh. sensitivity, and without inadvertently touching interference. Okay. So that it can effectively <laughs> monitor the environment from a variety of account within the scope of its monitoring of human movement. Okay. More suitable for the needs of the market, closer to the lives of consumers, applicable to the office, home, shops, factories and other places bringing the convenience, but also bring unexpected joy and a sense of security. I so, have no idea what that is. Um, I've got to tell you. Does it vibrate? It does it perfectly. Okay. This device is perfect for what we need here, okay. particularly given the current circumstances. So the first person... <laughs> that replies to us with a sensible answer. Leave a comment. Um, leave a comment below. And um, we'll see what we can dig up around the yeah, place. Yeah, we'll give you a prize pack of something or other. It'll be worth it. Oh, undoubtedly. Probably won't be a budgie ladder, though. No, and it won't be a box of cheesels either. That no. cost us $10 to send a box of cheesels to the three suburbs over in Perth. Can you believe that? I can. Price gouging, dude. Oh, yeah. Try dealing with DHL. <laughs> um, so, 
anyway, so that's the the uh, competition this week. Mm -hmm. um, I believe we've got somebody now that's going to actually help us relieve a bit of pressure. Joining us now is our good mate, Paul Reynolds. Paul's a great bass player, excellent singer, has also been a really good uh, teacher of music. Okay. Um, and uh, many hidden talents has, uh, has he got. And um, I think he's going to show us one of them now, Phil. Yeah. Paul, how you doing, mate? Very well, thanks, mate. I think I'm blushing a bit. <laughs> <laughs> That aside, yes. And, 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 I'm going to talk about something that's not music, which is one of my principal passions, which is margaritas. <laughs> nice. Mine too. So what are the ingredients of a margarita, Paul? Well, we're talking about what we think of as the classic margarita. This I got this recipe from uh, the head bartender in a restaurant in Bali called Arena, and he shared this he makes the best margaritas and he shared this recipe with me and it contains tequila usually white tequila generally better than uh, the gold variety for a margarita uh, especially if it's something like jose that's good quality um, you need triple sec plus, mm. and you need a simple sweet and sour syrup and uh, usually you can make that yourself you boil water and milk sugar into it and then you add orange and lemon juice uh, but for the purpose of the exercise because I'm a bit lazy uh, we have pre-made <laughs> sweet and sour syrup which is essentially the same thing right um, so those are the ingredients the only other thing you really need is salt uh, okay. and a little lime and then you're in business fantastic let's have a look how it all goes together then Okay, now, I've taken the liberty of, of measuring out my ingredients beforehand, just to speed the process along. So we have a little cocktail shaker, and we have 100, now making this uh, recipe for two, we have 100 mils of delicious tequila, right there. We have 40 mils of triple sec. Oh. And we have 60 mils, sorry, two people, 60 mils of sweet and sour syrup, just like that. Right. And that, essentially, is what you got. Now, the things that go with it, of course, is the preparation of the glasses. And I haven't done that, so I'll just show you what I'm doing here. We have uh, a particularly down-market container which contains salt, mm -hmm. and we take... Is that a fairly salt. coarse salt there, Paul? Regular salt. Nothing, none of your uh, 100-year-old Tibetan rock salt or anything like that. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> Bone grain. So we take uh, a slice of a piece of lime, we take our glass, and we rub the outside of the rim with the lime juice, with the lime, giving it just a little squeeze so it releases a bit of juice, and wind the glass around like that, so it goes all the way around, and then you place it into the salt, like that, with a little 
agitated the salt so that there's a pod noise there. And you have a glass that has a beautiful salty rim. Wow, oh, excellent. You want, it, you want it all the way around. That's clever. And you want it on the outside of the glass, not on the inner side of the glass. Okay. You want the flavour of the salt to go with the drink in your mouth, not in the glass. Right. I'll just do this second glass here. Give it a twirl and a bit of a squeeze. Let's see what I'm doing again there. Like that. And once again, in the salt, a little shake around so all the rim gets a bit of covering and not too much. There, and we have our second glass beautifully salted all the way around. Unfortunately, there's a bit of a trend at the moment in bars to put salt around half the glass, oh. which is pointless because it means you run out of salt because you run out before you run out of margarita. <laughs> um, which is to be avoided at all costs. Yeah. So, plenty of salt around. Absolutely. You finish the preparation of the glass by having a slice of lime, which goes on the side. It's been pre cut and just cut along the vein, so it slides onto the glass there and hopefully stays more or less upright. And the second glass, the same way. Two glasses now looking just as though they've stepped out of a cocktail magazine. <laughs> now, this, unfortunately, is where it gets a little bit noisy, so you might have to be careful. I'm just going to go to the fridge and grab the ice. Yep. And you put the ice in, excuse me, into your cocktail shaker. Beware of the noise here. <laughs> now, your cocktail shaker is nice and cold, your lid is fitting firmly, you just slip it off the top like that, there you go, take your glass and pour. Wow, that looks great. Take your other glass, do the same thing. Too much in one glass, not enough in the other. We know which one's going to be mine and which one's going to be Catherine's, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> I actually thought they were both yours, yeah. Paul. <laughs> in, in the low tide glass is your perfect margarita. Now, you get lots of variations on margaritas. People will always mess about with them things, but um, if you start with the classic recipe like that, you get an idea of what it's really supposed to taste like. And then, of course, if you want to change it, you can do so but I find you always come back to this recipe. Um, the only variation that I particularly like is every now and then, you feel like something different. Instead of using your uh, triple sec, you can substitute this, which, if you can see it, is passion fruit pulp. You make a passion fruit margarita, mm. and ideally you could use a fresh passion fruit, but usually they're not available from the shops. So this stuff makes a very good substitute and you use just about half of one of those little tins for each uh, margarita and you get uh, the sweetness of the passion fruit and beautifully with the edge of the tequila. And there you have it. That's my dream come true. Well, wow, fa fantastic, Paul. I, I do remember many moons ago having a, a margarita in, in California and they used crushed ice. Um, I think I think I've only ever done it once because it gave me one of those ice headaches <laughs> right above here. So we quickly went back to the more traditional version that you've demonstrated today. So um, we're really happy about that, and I'm hoping that everybody will uh, have an Anzac margarita, maybe. I think that that's a great idea. Yes. Yeah. Paul, thank you so now, I much. I never for... understand the logic behind putting you know, ice in your margarita, crushed ice in your margarita, because all it's going to do is melt yeah, of and course. Uh, dilute the taste of perfection. So, <laughs> <laughs> Paul, it, take, 
thank you so much for coming on the show. Really good to see you. Thanks for that. And um, yeah, folks, um, go make some margaritas. What a brilliant thing to do on a long weekend. Cheers, guys. Thanks, mate. See ya. Cheers, Paul. So supposing we hit the body with a tremendous, uh, whether it's ultraviolet or just very powerful light, and I think you said that hasn't been checked, but you're going to test it. And then I said, supposing you brought the light inside the body, you can, which you can do either through the skin or uh, in some other way. And I think you said you're going to test that, too. Sounds interesting. We'll the right, folks could. right. And then I see the disinfectant where it knocks it out in a minute. One minute, and is there a way we can do something like that uh, by injection inside or or almost a cleaning? Because you see it gets on the lungs, and it does a tremendous number in the lungs. So it would be interesting to check that. So that you're going to have to use medical doctors with. But it sounds it sounds interesting. To okay. That was a bit of a laugh. Um, so, Phil, as we mentioned earlier, um, it's Anzac weekend. Um, got some info for us? I do, actually. Um, for those of you overseas that don't know what ANZAC is, it's Australian New Zealand Army Corps. Um, ANZAC Day is a national day of remembrance in Australia and New Zealand that broadly commemorates all Australian and New Zealanders who served and died in all wars, conflicts and peacekeeping operations and the contribution and suffering of all those who have served. On the morning of April 25th, 1915, the Anzacs set out to capture the Gallipoli Peninsula in order to open the Dardanelles to the Allied navies. The objective was to capture Constantinople, now Istanbul in Turkey, the capital of the Ottoman Empire and an ally of Germany. Because of the lockdown and the distancing um, traditionally in Australia, every year we have um, an Anzac Day service at all the war memorials around the country, from cities to little country towns. Everybody does it. Um, and this year, though, what the RSL, the Returned Servicemen's League, is um, proposing is at 6am, at the hour of the traditional Anzac Day dawn service, they invite you to head to the end of your driveway, gate or balcony, tune into ABC Radio, 6PR, 96FM or 6IX, and stand united but apart to remember the fallen, those who served, and those who continue to serve, lest we forget. It's very important, Phil. Um... It is. You know, it's going to be different for everybody this year, particularly for the diggers that normally would be there to Well, we have Anzac friends. Day marches as yeah. well in the yeah. cities where all the vets um, march or get pushed in their wheelchairs now. Um, it's yeah. going to be a very different day tomorrow, but I think the sentiment is still going to be there. Mm. Um, for those of you that are watching uh, after this happens, I hope you do get the chance to go online and review some of the things that happen. It's going to be particularly special in Australia and New Zealand this year. It's something that is really big for us because we're, we're such a young co country. You know, we're only 200 odd years old and we don't have a lot of traditions. And so this is a really, really big one for us and, um, and it's important. And, and it's not just the people from the past, it's those serving now as well yeah i think also the they were talking earlier about uh bagpipe players <laughs> yeah um some bagpipe <laughs> yeah. players six lord help us i'm thinking of a couple well of people received. in particular <laughs> um it won't be 6 a.m but i think 11 a.m they're proposing that bagpipe players are out there doing, uh, doing amazing, amazing grace, grace. They, yeah. so if you do hear something a bit odd it's, it's not a you, cat dying. It's not your neighbour's cat <laughs> being run over. <laughs> it is actually probably Ken and some of his mates <laughs> uh, out there playing Amazing Grace. 
and uh, I hope everybody gets to stop for a minute. Yeah, have and a, have, have a, listen have to a that. minute silence. Um, yeah. That's what we do as well. Have a minute silence and just um, think about it all of um, the sacrifices people made for the country we live in today. Yeah. When I was a young man, I carried my pack And I lived the free life of a rover From the Murray's Green Basin to the dusty outback I waltzed my Matilda all over then in 1915, my country said, son, it's time to stop rambling, cause there's work to be done. So they gave me a tin hat and they gave me a gun and they sent me away to the war. And the band played waltzing Matilda As we sailed away from the Kai And amidst all the tears And the shouts and the cheers We sailed off for Gallipoli Oh, well, I remember that terrible day When the blood stained the sand and the water And how in that hell that they call Sovla Bay We were butchered like lambs at the slaughter Johnny Turkey was ready He primed himself well He showered us with bullets And he rained us with shells And in five minutes flat He'd blown us all to hell Nearly blew us right back to Australia And the band Played waltzing Matilda As we stopped to bury our slain And we buried ours And the Turks buried theirs And it started all over again Now those who were living did their best to survive In that mad world of death, blood and fire And for seven long weeks I kept myself alive All the corpses around me pile higher Then a big turkey shell knocked me are so overtaken And when I awoke In my hospital bed And saw what it had done Christ, I wished I was dead Never knew there were worse things Than dying And no more I'll go on Sing Matilda so the green bushes so far and near For the hang tens and pegs A man needs two legs No more waltzing Matilda for me
They collected the cripples, the wounded and maimed And they shipped us back home to Australia The legless, the armless, the blind and insane Those proud wounded heroes of Sofla and as our ship pulled into Circular Quay I looked at the place where me legs used to be And thank Christ there was nobody waiting for me To grieve and to mourn and to pity And the band Played waltzing Matilda As they carried us down the gangway But nobody cheered They just stood and stared And they turned their faces away And now every April I sit on my porch And I watch the parade pass before me I see my own comrades How proudly they march Reliving the dreams of past glory I see the old men All twisted and torn the forgotten heroes of a forgotten war And the young people ask me What are they marching for? And I ask myself the same question And the band plays waltzing Matilda And the old men I'll answer the call But year after year Their numbers get fewer Someday no one will march there at all Waltzing Matilda Waltzing Matilda Go waltzing Matilda with me Okay, so next We've got a, a really famous person uh, to chat to, haven't we? Um, we have. We have. We've got Gary Dunn, otherwise known as the MC extraordinaire on The Profile. The host of our Profile show about yeah. uh, WA musicians. Yep. And uh, he's been in isolation in a beautiful part of our state. Um, I think he just had something thrown at him, but there we go. Um, <laughs> How you doing, Gary? Yeah, I'm good. Uh, uh, Phil and uh, Mark Whitehouse, uh, so nice to be on your show. And um, are you uh, whining much today, or we're yeah, whining and a bit cheesy along with it as well. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, what have you been up to, Gary, in this time of intense isolation? Well, I've been in this tin can for five weeks now, um, wow. working obviously, you know, the planet Earth is blue and there's nothing I can do. Um, <laughs> you know, it's, uh, I think I'm going a bit cabin feverish, um, you know, so. I think uh, there's a lot of that around, sure. Gary, the old cabin fever, but, you know, it's yeah. bringing out some interesting sides to people's uh, nature and their working habits. Yeah. Yeah, certainly. And look, uh, um, I feel sorry for all the people who have carers that can't have their carers at the moment. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a pretty sad situation for a lot of people out there. So it I'm is. not really doing it that tough. I've uh, got a beautiful wife um, who feeds me magnificently. And um, 
And uh, yeah, life life is not too bad at all, apart from not being able to see the grandkids. But um, I'll take you for a quick walk of where I live. If you like. Yeah, we'd have a we'd love to have a look around the place, Gary. And whereabouts yeah, are you? For our viewers, just tell us where you are. Uh, I'm in South Yonder up and look, sorry about the finger. I don't have much time because I've got a virtual pub appointment uh, coming up soon. Oh, uh, we won't we won't hold you back from that. I'm going to flip the camera around and, and so this is I live on wow. um, the back of the Murray River. I'll just get rid of that beautiful. Oh, wow. Um, so, yeah, we, we boat, we crab. Um, it's quite a quiet place. It's always like this, even though everyone's self-isolated at the moment. So that's beautiful. Yeah, there's, there's my beautiful wife, um, and um, say hello. Hi, Jackie. Yep, saying hello. I think, and yeah, so we just uh, sort of bunk it down and um, yeah, doing our bit for for um, for Australia, if you like, because we're all in this together, aren't we? We well, are yeah. indeed. So you're. Um, you're you're still working a bit, Gary, remotely, are you? Yeah, I'm working every day, uh, Mark. Mm. Uh, and um, yeah, it's a it's a difficult scenario trying to sell commercial solar. Um, mm. But yeah, it's uh, at the moment with what's going on. But um, oh, we're getting there. So you know, there's, mm. there's lots of opportunities out there still with people who um, mm. um, who whose businesses are going well. So there's it, 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 at the moment. So. Yeah, it looks like you're um, dressed for work, actually. I mean, you do look very dapper at the best of times, um, even on the profile. Mate, and, hmm. You know I've got an image to uphold, uh, Mark and, and Phil, and um, uh, thank you for for um, asking me uh, uh, mm. and telling me how well I'm dressed. So this is how I like to get around the house. I'll just, you know, it's a wonderful suit, this suit. Oh, beautiful, and, um, mate, beautiful. You'll much enjoy it. Um, <laughs> I don't know if you can get a good picture of all that. But, uh, Mate, that's yeah, stunning. Yeah. Stunning. And uh, uh, Tony Barlow's number, was it? <laughs> yes. Yeah, I think um, uh, I took the pants to uh, to the uh, dressmaker for alterations and um, they went into self-isolation, so he's got my pants for a couple of weeks. So. Ah, oh, that explains <laughs> it then. That explains it. <laughs> yeah, um, look, uh, talking about the pub, uh, did you hear the one about the guy who walked into the pub? No. no. Lucky bastard. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose you're going to tell me you've been shopping with the missus lately as well. No. Oh, mate, I don't leave the house, to be honest with you. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm tied down, or always hoping to be. So, um, <laughs> well, we'll leave that until after the virtual pub, shall we? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, we might leave that uh, after we've stopped uh, filming. <laughs> Yeah, look, I've been watching your show, and um, yeah, great. Um, I'm glad. I'm glad you can bring some joy to some people out there. We hope. I'm glad. I'm glad you passed three viewers now. It's good. I, I think you. It's really picking up. Mate, I think it's I think it's racing towards five now. Yeah, our numbers yeah, are not really... as big as the profile, I must say, but um I mean we we can't compete with you guys. I mean you're you're just the best host. Oh no, come on mate. Yeah. You know, that, you know that's not true. And um I'm lucky to be doing what I'm doing, so anyway. <laughs> No more profiling at the moment, that's for sure. No, no we've got to wait, haven't we? We'll be back. We'll be back one day. Yeah. Lots of, lots of people still talking about it. I spoke to Dave Emus uh, at the Galleria the other day. Yeah. And uh, he's rapped about it. Con Rakos as well popped in. Oh, Con. And uh, yeah. he's, uh, he's a great supporter. One and a half metres. What was that one? Are you keeping your social distance? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah we've got yeah. signs up all over work and bits of tape all over the floor and a, and a dingy-dong bell guys, thing. Okay, sorry to cut in. Are you guys um, sitting one and a half metres away from each other? Yes, we or? certainly we are. We are, and we actually measured it too, so we're definitely really? far enough oh, away. Oh, yeah. On ep if you watched episode one, you'd know. Okay, yeah, <laughs> I, I saw that. You guys sitting side by side in the middle of some cheese. Yeah. <laughs> well, we've got to have the cheese. We've got to have the cheese. It's a cheesy situation. It is. Uh, well, thanks so much for joining us. So, yeah, look, um, thanks for thinking of me and thanks for keeping in touch. And, yeah, you know, um, I hope your show uh, keeps kicking on and goes well, boys. Yep. We'll thanks. be touching base, mate. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, okay. Gaz.
and uh, have right, have fun at the virtual yeah. pub. Yes, I'm, I'm off. I need to get there quickly. <laughs> All right. I'm going the non-smoking or smoking section in that virtual pub, so it's it's good. Oh. <laughs> Mate. Okay, I'm gonna Take. I'm gonna put my finger on the button and and uh, say goodbye. Thank you very <laughs> much. <laughs> And there we have it, brother Dunn, uh, host of the profile. Thank you, Gary. That was fantastic to Doesn't catch up. Doesn't he live in a great place? Oh man. Oh man. Do you think if if we got on a boat and rowed past the back there, we could wave? We could do that. We could wave to him as we sail by. Maybe we? we could do a show right. down there one time. On the river. A remote, uh, uh, a outside great, broadcast. What a great idea. Yeah. And the weather's looking good too. Isn't it? it is. Mm. All right. Well, that's probably about it for this week, isn't it? It is. I'm thinking of uh, changing what I wear to work as well. Um, Well, you know, Gary set a bit of a trend there. So I think um, I can see myself dashing dashing down to Tony Barlow's, buy myself a new jacket. Um, Don't know where I get the underwear from. But Uh, as as, as Gaz said, you know... um, Working from home with teleconferencing, you only need to see from here up. So his clients don't need to see that he's in his undies. Well, no. Thanks for that one, Gary. That's brought a (laughs) smile to our face. And um, just a reminder about the competition. I'm not going to tell you the answer now. You thought you were going to hear it now, but no, you're not. Next Um, week. We'll give you the answer next week. So leave it in the comments. Hmm. Yep. Good idea. Have a good week, everyone. Um, stay safe. Ring each other up. Talk to each other. Good idea, Phil. Take care. See ya. Bye.